hello everyone so today we have the amalna joseph with us who is working for the qualcom right now so uh, hi amalna how are you i am good hi rajat hi how are you yeah so i am fine so we will start with a brief introduction like from where you have done the btech uh, graduation and currently what are you doing okay so i am currently a design verification engineer in qualcom it's been 2.5 years here here and before that i have completed my undergrad from national institute of technology calicut and it was in uh, electronics and communication engineering and i i did my majors were uh, uh, digital design machine learning and signal processing and uh, yeah that that's that's a whole overview about my okay okay great so yeah so how was your college life at nit calicut okay college life was fun interesting two years back covid lockdown and uh, after that we got like one semester back in college it was mm-hmm. actually fun along with a lot of learnings and a lot of friendships and happiness yeah yeah and why you have chosen nit calicut Com- electronics and communication only like why not computer science in other nits yeah i was a quite bit confused uh, which branch to choose actually and mm-hmm. my parents guided me to choose mm-hmm. it because during that time my parents were fully focused on a government job and economics mm-hmm. was had a really good opportunity in terms of you know that's why i started uh, joining the the uh, department but then later on i started uh, the industry more uh, uh, more interesting and then i joined okay. Also, I can see you have done a research internship at IIC Bangalore. So, yeah. what was the role and how you applied? You can just give me the brief idea about it. Like, what was the role? How you applied? What was the selection process? You can tell. Okay. Okay. So, I always wanted to get into IIC because during my first first second year, I used to had a lot of seniors who you know uh, did internships in IIC, and I always wanted to. uh and join the college understand the research exposure over there and a uh, few of my seniors were have given a lot of presentations in college regarding their internship experiences and how did they you know pursued the research and everything so that struck me really well and then so from that year i always wanted to get into iic for like maybe few months or to have an exposure so i i used to keep on trying it you know from my second year also i used to try a lot but then i haven't got an op- opportunity uh, in my fourth semester i mean in the in the third year i i mailed a few few professors actually and uh, I, there was no response in the third year as well but at the end of my uh, for seventh semester which is the fourth year first semester mm-hmm. i sent a mail to one of Uh, one of a professor whose work was closely related to my experience and uh, uh his he he has a lab which is uh, which, which which used to do a lot of really good activities and lot of uh, projects which is closely uh, related to my field of interest so i mailed him directly with the experience i had and he responded and i felt really happy great Yeah, yeah, I never expected a response back, and um, it was hap- uh, He he conducted an interview after that. Mm-hmm. Um, I I was selected for the summer internship after my fourth year actually. So before joining Qualcomm, I did two months internship in IIS. That was actually fun. Okay. I never expected I would get. <laughs> and what was the role there? What was the exactly role there? It was AIML. Uh, it was a research intern role it was mostly a uh, statistical signal processing activities i'd say yeah okay um, great, great, great. activities yeah. yeah so you have got the internship at uh, qualcom so how you applied for the internship and how you got the ppo like uh, what was the selection process for the internship it was campus placement or off campus placement uh qualcom was uh, on campus placement i applied through the campus portal and i have done my internship third year in qualcom and i got it converted to a ppo qualcom usually converts like the yeah. the pre placement ratio is quite uh, high in qualcom so it's almost 100% conversion ratio almost and i got an offer for placement in the same team which i have worked great great and uh, what are the important topics for the internship particularly in qualcom 
So internship was uh, mostly puzzles, a lot of puzzles they have asked and a lot of basics of digital electronics mostly. Yeah. And yeah, it was mostly, in even interviews was mostly based on a lot of puzzles and the basics. I mean, people, which we, we generally neglect a lot of, uh, overlook a lot of fundamentals, right? So those were the things that, uh, you know, Qualcomm was looking for from, uh, on a third year perspective. Mm -hmm. How many rounds were there in the internship and the uh, what is the PPO process? They have taken any interview for the PPO? They have converted on the work based on work? Yeah, PPO, there was no interview. It was direct conversion based on the quality of the work mm -hmm. and based on the feedbacks from the manager. Yeah. And, uh, so it was a direct uh, conversion. Mm -hmm. and what my was... had inter interviews as well, but I didn't have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for the internship, how many rounds were there? For the internship, uh, if I recall properly, it's around three rounds. One was HR and two technical. Yeah. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So currently you are working as a formal verification engineer. So tell me about the role, what uh, what is all, all about it? Like uh, what are the tools you are using? Like uh, you can just give the brief idea. Okay. What are the tools? What are the skills required for this role? Yeah, it's so a formal verification is a really interesting domain to work. Uh, it's 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 very different from a simulation based environment and it gives a full proof of uh, what we're checking and it's very interesting and mostly we use system level assertions and the tool which we are using is uh, synopsis vc formal and a lot of people do use jasper gold as well yeah so the two tools and the, mostly it's a system level assertions skills are required for that also also a lot of uh, you know problem solving skills and if you know more data structures and everything are really good okay okay there are different type of verifications like ip soc formal so what is the difference uh, between the formal and ip and soc okay so uh, formal is a uh, verification uh, verification paradigm, I would say. And there are like two types of design. I mean, verification, one is SOC verification and IP verification. IP verification, we mostly do the uh, design specifications of the particular IP. And in SOC level, it's mostly connectivity and other, uh, you know, data path. Uh, verification. So, if you if you're doing an IP verification, it is mostly detail oriented. You will look. Uh, you will have to verify each and every corner cases and every details of the IP and how it's been designed properly or not. And if it's if it's an SOC verification, it's it's a high level overview. I would say it, it is between the IPs and IP. So, so that's the major uh, difference between SOC and IP based verification. So, for this role, scripting language is also used. Yes, yes. Every day we have a lot of, we have to make a lot of enhancements in the test bench, which we deploy, right? So for that day to day, we use uh, Python based scripting. Yeah. That, Python -based that scripting. Comes. Great. Pickle, pickle also we do use. Yeah. 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 Just wait. But if you, if you do one, either one of the scripting language, if mm -hmm. you are comfortable in one of them, you can easily switch between the language. Yeah, yeah, no... yeah. exactly. So you have worked for AI and ML research based projects and all in your profile. So just can you brief me about the what is the importance of AI ML in VLSI? So, yeah, so you also have done the internship at IAC Bangalore. So it was useful in this role currently. And if it is useful, how it is useful? Okay, so in, so in my in uh, VLSI, there are a lot of scopes of automations uh, with respect to uh, the design and the test page enhancements and the flow enhancements. So there are, they have, uh, you know, they, currently there are a lot of scripting activities which do the normal automations, but ML based automations are maybe the future of automations because since we have a lot of data, especially in terms of the coverage, especially in terms of the bug, bug reporting and all. So AI ML based automations are really important in the future. So clean, Other, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, you can continue. Anything? So clean data is what we really need to do the automations. Once we have those ready, we can try using different different models, see how it performs, and based on that, we we can enhance. Okay, okay. Other than Qualcomm, have you given any other companies interview in the campus or off campus? Uh, on campus, I have given uh, a few interviews. 
for software roles as well. Yeah. Okay, okay. And how is the placement uh, ratio at the NIT Calicut for the AC students particularly? Uh, during my time, there we had a lot of hiring. So we had around thousand place place placements during my tenure. Uh, so it had a really good uh, placement ratio during the time. Yeah, okay. because industry was really uh, hiding those time because just mm -hmm. after the COVID it was really good in terms of placements. Yeah. yeah. Now not exactly updated with the numbers need to actually yeah. check. Yeah. Uh, you are from NIT Calicut. There are some people from second tier college, third tier college, in which companies doesn't visit, don't visit the college, right? So they struggle a lot to get the VLSI companies. So what is the ideal path according to you for them? Is it Amtech or coaching or what is the third? What is the ideal path according to you? Okay, so I have seen a lot of people directly getting selected from DTEC to Qualcomm. Mm -hmm. So I am not really sure whether MTech is needed. If you like it, you can pursue. But if you have a really good understanding of the basics of digital design, and uh, if you have done your uh, final year project on that, and uh, yes, so you can directly apply and maybe try to get a, uh, re uh, get it uh, try to get a referral from the people who are working over here. I think you should be good. Okay. Also, have you given the gate exam in the college? I have given during my third year. I, I haven't that much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. So what are the future plans you have currently? Like you are planning for the master's or you are, you want to grow in the job only. What are the future plans? So currently I am, my plan is to grow in the organization. Yeah. To, uh, because the field is quite vast and yeah. there are a lot of things you can learn and explore. So I want to explore currently those Okay, okay. Right now, recession is also going on. So there is a lot of layoff. Uh, so what is the ideal solution for the people who are a fear of the layoff, then that they can be removed from the company, what they should, they should do extra, that uh, their uh, position is secured? Uh, yeah. So I'm not really sure whether I'm the right person to answer this question because I, <laughs> because I only have uh, two, two years experience. Yeah. But I would say if we are updated with the technologies and the domains which we we always if we always upskill ourselves with respect to uh, the the work we are doing or the technology which we are working or the domains which we are interested if we are upskilled on then we are updated on that I think we are good I mean even if layoffs do happen it's fine uh, you can find a way yeah okay. What are the top skills for the formal verification role? Is it system around UVM or uh, even if you don't know the UVM, you can uh, be in the like in this role? Yeah, so mostly system verilog assertions are the one which we use. Also, if you have a thorough understanding of the system verilog, you don't need UVM in the uh, formal work which we do on the day-to-day -day basis. So if you're good on that, also you need a lot of um, understanding of the algorithms and data structure. I think that is quite needed. Yeah. There is C-based C programming uh, verifications also, right? Test test yeah. cases and all. So uh, so you can just give me the brief idea of what is all about it because mainly we are focusing on system alone UVM, but uh, recently a lot of company are using C-based verification also, right? So right. if you can give me the brief idea about it. C-based verifications are also uh, quite uh, quite popular, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing SOC-based verification, most of the people do use C-based verification and uh, it's quite faster compared to system Verilog. And uh, uh, so if you are using C, C++ based verification, it's quite similar to the SV UVM flow, just that you have a lot of uh, functions written, you know, pre-built functions written in the C-based flows and you can directly use those to uh, work it on the C base flows. So architecture is same, like uh, we have the monitor sequential yeah. or okay. Okay. okay, okay, okay. It is just the library and all files and all functionality. So basically functionality. You'll, be, you'll be having a lot of free build functions in the C base flow, a lot of libraries is already built within the companies because all already companies are quite matured in terms of, you know, the mm -hmm. DBs and everything. They, they have a lot of uh, libraries in ready so you need to basically use those and yeah 
So, so what is your view on the VLSF or also that work we are doing right now, like uh, podcasts or uh, free courses? So what is your take on the VLSF or all? I think VLSA for all is doing quite an impressive journey so far. I think a lot of podcasts are coming up with the industry leaders. Those are quite exciting and would be useful for the people who are working in the industry to keep themselves updated. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Any tips for uh, at the conclusion, any tips for the juniors who are who are in your college or who are struggling to get the job in VLSA? So any tips for them? Uh, okay, so uh, try to keep your resume uh, ready without bluffing a lot. Keep it ready, keep it real, keep it uh, a lot technical, add your projects, add your uh, uh, summer internships. I think we have to utilize every, all of our summer vacations for, for our resumes also. Also, we have to, uh, you know, uh, do our personal lives as well but uh, resumes are important so is our personal life so we need to have a balance between both of them yeah yeah so thank you amla thank you amla joseph thank you so much have a nice day bye take care bye. thank okay. you